Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the care and housing of the striped tail scorpion. Who is, I don't know if you can see it, right in there. So, this species is a desert species similar to the giant hairy scorpion, one of which I have right over here, which I am planning to post a video on as well. However, this species does tend to be a slightly more defensive. They're uh, slightly smaller and, uh, you know, so as you can see, more defensive. If I pick my hairy scorpion up like this, uh, okay, oh, one second, I need to experience some technical difficulty. Got it back, okay. So this species is quite similar in care to the giant hairy scorpion, just much smaller. I tend to feed mine small crickets as well as mini mealworms as it is still quite small. In fact, it just had a meal last night. As for the enclosure, this size for this individual would be okay. Uh, for a large adult, I'd probably go a bit something bigger, somewhat like this size. But it's all really up to your personal, personal preference. They don't really care how big or small their enclosure is, as long as it's not way too small. As for substrate, I generally use a mix of this wash sand and uh, just normal sand mixture. It works really well. It's a bit gravelly. Um, it's not great for holding burrows, but mine will just sit under a piece of... Uh, cover that I put in the enclosure. As for temperature and humidity, try to keep it very, very low humidity wise. You don't want the enclosure to get wet. It's a very dry and arid species as they are found in areas like Arizona and some parts of New Mexico. They're very common in their native ranges. I apologize for the mess over here, but they're very common in their native ranges as they like to live under lots of ground cover. Uh, and they, they make these little sort of dugouts under the ground cover. I've seen ones in the wild get up to like this big. Uh, so that's probably about three inches long. Um, and yeah. So as for housing, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to change out the substrate right now because I'm just kind of redecorating the enclosure for the purposes of this video and just so my scorpion can get a little bit more enrichment. So what I like to do is I kind of just slope it up like this so it builds some more depth in the enclosure and also uh, gives this area up here more room for digging than down here. This species does like to burrow quite a lot if given the chance in captivity. However, in the wild, I don't see them making burrows uh, nearly as much as and species like the hairy scorpions do. Um, but it they like to do it in captivity. But generally, if you give them enough cover to hide under, they're not going to do too much burrowing. So just kind of sink the stuff into the ground like that. Just stuff, just little pieces for decoration. These little plastic bones here. I also like to add some sticks and climbing opportunities as I found my individual is often quite active in crawling around her or its enclosure. I'm not sure it's the sex but I do add a few climbing opportunities just in case it decides that it wants to explore a little bit and crawl, crawl around. So I just put stuff like that. I have these little sticks that I got from the beach um, and they work quite well just to make some sort of like little decoration, sort of spiky looking thing. I also use a lot of choya um, in many of my desert species enclosures. 
besides some of my desert geckos because I fear that they'll get stuck in it um, if the holes are too large. But for most of my other species, like my hairy scorpion, for example, and some of my desert beetles as well, I do enjoy using Choya as it looks very nice and it's very easy to use and I often find it doesn't mold easily. Then I put some very, very dry, dried out moss in the enclosure just to make it so my scorpion has some more hiding opportunity. So if it decides that it doesn't want to be under a rock or something, it can go under that little piece of moss there and feel secure. And then I also just have this rock for the same purposes that I used the cork bark, just for hiding. And if this does look a little bit cluttered, that's perfectly okay. They do like to have small enclosed spaces where they can um, seclude themselves within the habitat. Now I'm just going to take her out with my tongs and see small ones in particular very fast and this species is not great for handling and also quite defensive but this one isn't too bad compared to the ones I've found in the wild and this is not an adult okay this makes me a bit nervous because she's on the bottom of my foot okay one second all right this species is most definitely not an adult um, and a lot smaller than the ones I've seen in the wild. And that's really all I have. This enclosure is really nice. It's literally just some plastics. It's pretty thin, so I wouldn't keep anything that can chew through it like a Jerusalem cricket or a giant centipede in here. Or possibly some tarantulas, so it's probably fine. It has some little air holes on the sides for ventilation. And it's just really nice. You can get it for like a few cents probably less than a dollar has this little feeding hatch right here so really nice the lid is nice and secure so nothing will really be able to push out uh and yeah that is my striped tail scorpion thank you guys very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please do make sure to like and if you're feeling extra fancy go ahead and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one Bye bye